to another episode of the software and with tactics podcast today we're gonna go ahead with um yesterday i went ahead with uh, it is a book about stoics and their lives and um you know some historically important stoics like uh clientes and uh cato and whomever but uh today we're not gonna go ahead with that but we are seeing what Seth Gordon is talking and or writing about, has been writing about the past few days. And um, I'm going to read that. So I'm going to show you. Here we go. Let's see. If you're watching a YouTube clip or taking or a talking head, I'm sorry, you can probably tell whether or not you disagree with someone even with the sound off and we judge a book or an article on the layout and appearance long before we have read all the words human beings invented symbolic logic to make complex arguments based solely on the concepts in evidence it is a particularly advanced form of discussion one that no other species is particularly good at and we're not good at it either bloviation whatever this means shore anger cultural identity and the trans ferrens of emotion all show up in our brands long before we've processed the rational truth of what is being discussed this is worth keeping in mind when you're trying to persuade someone of your point of view and even more important when someone is trying to persuade you period and i mean this is definitely something that i have never you know maybe oh i'm just seeing something I'm just seeing something that is not really good. And I wasn't aware of that, so I'm gonna change that in the background because obviously, of course, I am rendering something in the background. And uh Yeah, that is a bit of a shitty thing now. But as I get but I get it but I guess it is fine anyway. Um you know always this thought of okay you know how does this look like to somebody else you know just you know always this everything outside is so important i've never really liked it but unfortunately it is just important how things look and how other people see certain things um it is important you know it is important to consider that it is important to keep it in mind it is important to um also use that for your advantage to be honest i mean when i'm presenting something in terms of a presentation then of course i am trying to make it look as professional and as good as it is even though like the product itself isn't too good like for me this is a debate about um well it's 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 not a debate about whatever um for me it is about um for me it is clearly about this a thought of of always having to present uh, present things in uh, in a pseudo <laughs> good way so that you know people think that it is cool even though it isn't and um you know my point of view company should really 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 make sure that the product itself is really good instead of always thinking about the packaging and the marketing and whatever you know so that everybody thinks that it is good you get the point i guess Home is wherever my cello is. Ben Sonder is bringing the Boston Philharmonic and Beethoven to New York in a few weeks. I'm excited to see them in person, but it is also streaming live. I hope you're able to come. Well, his impact on the musical canon is legendary. Ben's ruckus extends far into how we lead, how we live, and how we teach. The book he wrote with Ross Sander is rightly celebrated as a classic among business slash motivation books and i listen to it at least once a year his ted talk is brilliant and i could go on for me the biggest lessons from his passion as a teacher he views his musical practice as a chance to enroll others in a journey and the volunteers in his orchestras find that this journey the chance to lean into possibility to fail to connect to hear and to be heard changes their lives i would certainly also think so um that being in his orchestra might really give you something at the heart of possibilities change the passion for change is available to everyone and that's actually a youtube video 
uh, I'm not gonna play it because I I'm a bit you know feared of the fact that uh, it might be copyrighted and whatever and so yeah the title of this post comes from one of Ben's students he just asked to write about the music they are working on the approach and the change they felt of course any 14 year old could easily use GPT to compose a more professional essay but these letters are far from the banal homework of a middle school student. Instead, the letters open the door to growth, to learning, and to the humanity that we all seek. Possibility is wherever we look for it. Quietly change it. When we think about altering a policy as a setting, or even the outfit we usually wear, it is easy to imagine that everyone is going to notice. But indeed, nobody gives a shit, because we all think that people are talking uh, and or looking at us, about us, but um, you know, in the end, it is everyone thinking the same thing. Like you know, I hope nobody noticed X, Y, and C, and so on and so forth. In fact, almost no one will. That is because no one cares about the noise in our heads or the actions we take nearly as much as we do. You might think it is going to cause a big commotion when you do something that is inconsistent, but if it is generous and useful. It will simply happen. We couldn't noisily change it, even if we wanted to. And the last one for today, cheating at the golf. Someone who cheats at the friendly game of golf when nothing much is at stake, how can you possibly trust them with something important? And yet organizations and individuals cheat at golf all the time. They put club clauses in the fine print, span a media list, conceal the long-term impact of short-term decisions, steal your data and use it behind your back. If they are willing to do that, what else are they doing? The benefit of the doubt is priceless and yet people waste it every day. The magic of a page a day, this is going to be the last one because I think that it might be brilliant. Um, well, all of Seth's writing is brilliant, but it might be really, really useful. In 1979, the page a day calendar was born. It is basically a book on its side. It's basically a book on its side, but the user rips off a page each day. My friend Michael Cater took this concept and ran with it, creating a calendars, creating calendars that sold millions of copies. Of course, everyone knows what day it is, and if you really uh, needs to know the date, well, that is pretty easy to find as well. So why spend twenty bucks on a block of pulp wood that tells you something you already know? It's the combination of presence and tension presence of holding today's message in your hand, bummer of a birthmark, ha, huh? Paul, I'm sorry, <laughs> it is today, today's insight and it is real right here and right now. And the tension of not knowing what is tomorrow will be and realizing that looking ahead isn't part of the deal, I've always treated this blog as aspiring to a bit of a page a day magic. The process of writing it gradually and having people read it that way is part of the appeal. So when Michael asked me to, finally, 40 plus years later, make my very own calendar, it was thrilling. And this is the first printed one I know of that includes videos. One can pre-order one today, you'll get it in plenty of time for January the 1st. No fair peeking ahead. Ha. Well, it is Feb February the, the 9th, um, the date on which this post was posted, or this um, article was posted. So... Um, you know, there indeed is, is plenty of time to uh, to do so. But yeah, with that being said, I'm going to end the episode here. I wish you the best and hopefully see you soon. So 